Hi, welcome back to part two of how to disassemble, clean, smooth up the action, reassemble the Colt 1860 Army Revolver. In the last part, we covered basic field stripping and cleaning at the range, uh, cleaning when we get home, assuming that there doesn't feel like there's anything inside the, uh, the operation, the mechanism here, just how to clean the, the cylinder, the barrel, get all the carbon off, uh, remove the nipples, get those clean, all that good stuff. Well, now we're at the point where, for one reason or another, I want to take the, uh, the, the operation mechanism apart. So, to do that, first thing we want to do is take off the grip. And that's held on with three screws, one here and two on either side of the hammer. So the first thing I'm going to do is loosen up this screw on the base. And if you're wondering what size screw driver to use. Uh, my advice is use one that fits. I don't know exactly what the sizes are, but I can strip this gun down with one screwdriver. And I have seen videos of other people uh, using two and sometimes even three different screwdrivers. And as you're going to see in this video, this one screwdriver is going to strip this gun down and put it back together. Do I advise you do that? Well, it's your gun. You do what you want with it. You've got to be careful, though, when taking these screws out because these modern reproductions, both Pieta and Uberti, are really bad about using soft-headed screws, and you can strip those heads off really easy if you're not careful. In fact, some people, when they buy a Uberti or a Pieta, the first thing they do is replace the screws with better screws. Okay, then the grip just slides off, and we're going to keep this over here, probably out of view of the camera, but I'm going to keep all the screws together because all of these screws are not the same size, so you do want to keep them together. Um, so now the next thing I want to do is release the tension from the hammer spring. And on this, what I'm going to do is just loosen up this hammer spring screw, and then I'm going to press the spring in off to the side and just let it loose. But on some guns, what you'll find is they cut this hammer spring a little too long and it actually rides up into the frame and it won't just rotate out of the way. So you'll have to take this screw completely off and get take the spring completely off. Now, if that's the case, you can think about maybe cutting that spring down so it just barely clears the frame like this one does. But for now, on this one, I'm just going to loosen this up a little. Push it in, twist it to the side, and it's off. Now I'm going to take the trigger guard off, and that's held on with one screw here and two screws here. And I hope you can see this because of this angle. And I'm just going to loosen these up. And I also advise if you're going to use the same screws, especially these soft screws that come with it, once you've taken it down for the first time, don't put them back in as tight as they were. Again, I th personally, I think these new reproduction companies use screws that are way too soft and they put them in way too tight. They really torque them down. So again, keeping the screws together, we're going to set that off to the side. Now we can see in the inside, and looking here, you can see here is the trigger spring and the bolt spring. It's one spring, actually, held on with this one screw. And I'm going to take that apart, take that out, just loosen up that screw. And that's a short screw, and the spring just drops right out. And of course, there we go. Spring just drops right out, and that's what that looks like. And I'm going to put the screw with it, set it up off to the side. Now, we're going to take out the trigger. And there is a definite sequence to this operation. So you you can't really take a, the hand, well, you can take the hammer out first, but we don't really want to. Um, we're going to take the trigger out first.
take the screw out, take the trigger out, put the screw together off to the side. Now we're going to take out the locking bolt, which you'll also hear me call a locking pin. Same thing. Take out the screw, drop out the bolt. This is the bolt that pushes up through the bottom of the frame, locks into the cylinder, holds it in place. And here's the screw. Set that off to the side. Now the last thing we're going to do is take off the hammer. Take out the screw. I'm going to slide the hammer off and take the ratchet hand out with it, which just rides this pin in a hulk here on the side. And take that out. Set that off to the side. Now this particular frame has another screw here and on the other side here. But these uh, two screws don't really serve any function other than to install a shoulder stock onto the gun. So I'm just going to leave those in. And this is just the basic frame right here. So for cleaning, again, now I can just drop this in hot soapy water, let it soak for a few minutes, then I can just brush it down good, brush around the, uh, the, the ratchet hand, brush inside, um, you can use a smaller brush to get down inside if you want. You can use a Q-tip. You can use cleaning solvent, whatever you want. Just inspect it, look it over, make sure you've got um, all the carbon residue out. Okay, now we got that clean. On to my problem. As it turns out, the problem really had very little to do with the hammer. I mean, you could say it did have something to do with the hammer. But really, it's this locking bolt that was causing the problem. This locking bolt rides against the hammer kind of like this. And if you want to really see a good animation on how this works, you can go into YouTube and you can do a search on um, Operation Animation of the Colt Walker Firearm. And there's some pretty good 3D animations on there that really go into good detail on how this works. And this bolt pivots on this screw and it pushes the bolt down. And that goes down below the frame and it lets the cylinder turn. Well, you'll see on this section here is split. And that's because in part of the operation, these two sections are pushed together and they ride back up over this little sear here and snap back into place. And that engages the bolt again so the next time you, you work the hammer you can cock the hammer and it pulls the pin down. If it doesn't completely snap back into place the hammer can actually move but the bolt is still locked into place. It's being held by the bolt spring up into the notch on the cylinder so it's holding the cylinder in place so the ratchet hand can't engage the ratchet and turn the cylinder and the hammer won't cock. And That's what my problem was. So to fix that, I just took a rat tail file and I just filed this piece out a little bit like that. And I'm not going to do any more because I already got enough. But yeah, you just file that down a little bit, being careful not to take too much. Well, how much is too much? Well, you might have to try it a couple of times. You might have to reassemble it and try it a couple of times before you know. But you want to take off just enough that you get good smooth operation on it. And now that I've got this apart, is a good time to smooth the action up. So um, I took my finger and I just kind of run it around this ratchet hand and I noticed there were some rough spots on it. So I took this sharpening stone and you can also just use some fine grit sandpaper and just sand it down lightly or you can just run it on the stone, kind of sand it down. Just take all those sharp burrs and sharp edges off. You can feel the edges. Make sure everything's kind of smooth. And you can do that with every part on it. You can do that with the bolt. Just feel it to see if there are any sharp edges on it. If there are, because there's one still there a little bit. And if there are, you can just run it. That's got it. You can just do a little, a little sandpaper and you can just sand it down a little. You can also clean these now that they're out. You can, again, just scrub it with a brush, get everything nice and clean. A little water displacement spray if you need, 
a little light coating of oil, and we're ready to reassemble. So, reassembling. First thing we're going to do is we're actually going to just reverse the process that we just used. So the first, the last part that we took out is going to be the first part we're going to replace, and that was the hammer. So the, the uh, ratcheting hand rides on the side opposite of this cutout, and again the pin just slides in that hole, and it slides up into this groove here. So we're just going to put that in there, slide it in. Going to line the hammer hole up with the screw hole, put the screw in, and tighten the back down. And again, when you're putting these screws in, be careful not to torque them down too tight or you may not get them out again. Next part we're going to put in is the next to the last part we took out, which is the bolt. That goes in like so. The bolt fits through that hole in the frame. So we're going to line that up. We're going to line up the screw with it. And I'm going to tighten that down. Then we're going to put in the trigger. Do the same thing. Trigger goes like that, facing forward. Just going to look down that hole until that trigger hole is lined up. You can tell it's lined up because you can't pull the trigger out. Tighten that down. Now if you want, you can spray a little gun oil down in there if you want to. Now we're going to put the spring back in place. It goes in like this. The long part goes on the trigger. And on top of the trigger, on top of the bolt, put it down in there like so. We're going to put this screw back in place. And these spring screws, you do want to tighten down a little tighter than the others. Okay. Make sure it works. Everything's... Okay. There. Now we're going to put the trigger guard back on. Oh, using the screw. Tighten those down. Okay, then we just put the spring back in place on the hammer, tighten the hammer spring back down, make sure everything's working. Okay, now we're going to put the grip back on. This one back in on the base. Now we'll try it a few times just to make sure everything works. 
Put it on half cock. Grease this back up, of course, with a little extra lard when you're done. Put the cylinder back on. Put the barrel back on. Put the wedge back in. And we're back in business. And to show you that I did actually resolve that problem with the cap, one cap, empty cylinder, empty chamber. Now you see it's cocked with the cap. Now I can lower the hammer onto the cap and then I can cock it again. I couldn't do that before. So problem solved. And the action is a lot smoother now too. I mean, I can Hammer, spring is even a little firmer. So that's it. Thank you for watching my two part series on the disassembly, cleaning, polishing, and reassembly of the Colt 1860 Black Powder Revolver.